Hey there, and welcome. I'm Anna Hartman, and this is Unreal Results, a podcast where I help you get better outcomes and gain the confidence that you can help anyone, even the most complex cases. Join me as I teach about the influence of the visceral organs and the nervous system on movement, pain, and injuries, all while shifting the paradigm of what whole body assessment and treatment really looks like. I'm glad you're here. Let's dive in. Today, I wanted to talk about movement rev philosophies and methodologies. I basically want to give you an overview of my philosophies and methodology because this will help you to understand this lens of view of how I see the body, how I incorporate the visceral organs and the nervous system into this truly whole body organism approach to rehabilitation and performance. So, um, one thing I always do whenever I'm teaching, I share one of my favorite quotes from Jean-Pierre Barral. And, um, I want to do that with you today because, um, I think it just gives some perspective to, to, to what we do as, um, sports healthcare professionals and, and what we're sort of faced with and working with when we, when you're working with, um, something so unique and so intelligent as the human body. So he says, The door has opened a crack and we can only imagine the vast expanse waiting behind it. Our knowledge about the human body is so small compared with the unbounded intricacy and richness it possesses. It is important to start the journey of discovery even though we cannot see where it will lead. Let us be grateful for all that our occupation offers even if it is not always easy. And I just love this quote, you know, especially, especially the beginning of it, right? Like the door has opened a crack and we can only imagine that vast expanse waiting behind it. My hope through this podcast and through my teaching on Instagram and my teaching on YouTube and even my teaching through my paid curriculums, right? The the LTAP course and the uh, mentorship and any teaching I do at symposiums and conferences, that, that really is it to open your eyes to this vast expanse of information that is already out there that you might just not have been aware of, right? That you might have not even understood that there was things like this to consider as well as to bring us back to realize just how intelligent and highly self-evolved the human body is. Because I think sometimes we lose perspective of just how ingrained in our cellular memory, our cellular operating system, how our bodies are, are wired to develop on their own with not a whole lot of input from us, not a whole lot of cognitive thought of developing from one cell, a joined cell, a zygote, that becomes an embryo, which becomes a fetus, which becomes a baby. And that baby goes from being helpless to learning how to move, eat, talk, think, run, jump, do all the things virtually on its own, right? There, nobody teaches the baby how to just, how to walk, 
right? Nobody teaches the baby how to even roll over or sit up. The baby does this because the whole organism, every cell in its body is designed as this like amazing super computer is like the best way to sort of think about it, to take the sensory inputs and create an output with it. Use that information that is scanned by it of the environment, both external environment and internal environment and do something with it respond to it whether that response is movement growth whatever it is i really do feel like we've lost sight of that we've lost sight of how amazing the human body is and so i i i want everyone to by learning how to appreciate the viscera and the nervous system and how it influences the musculoskeletal system and how we can leverage it to get better results for our clients, I want you to, to allow that to provide this feeling of awe about the human body and just to appreciate that our knowledge about it, like he says, is so small. So, 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 so utterly minimal, minuscule compared with the unbounded intricacy and richness it possesses. That's it. To go through your day seeing client by client, patient by patient, and to be sort of in this utter state of awe is like one of the best gifts that I have received from my teachers and from my work, and I feel like it is the best gift that I can give you who is learning from me. So with that said, I want to just do a little like formal, what is movement rough? Because like I said, I am taking an osteopathic type of belief system and marrying it with a more allopathic Western medicine sports performance thing and bringing them the, to, together and creating my own unique thing, just like you will create your own unique thing. And I, I challenge you to spend some time and sit and consider what your current philosophies are and what your current methodologies are and are they your own? Are they someone else's? Are they a blend of many people's, which then would make it your own unique thing? I want us all to have our own unique thing because we are all our own unique people. And that is what makes you so special as a physical therapist, as an athletic trainer, as a sports healthcare provider, is that you are unique and no one else in the world will evaluate and treat someone exactly like you do which means no one else in the world will get the same results for your client as you do. So I will share with you what my current philosophies and methodologies are, which is the movement rev philosophies and methodologies. And I'll also share uh, what my mission statement and my goals are. So the Movement Rev mission statement is to teach as many athletes and sports healthcare professionals as possible how to trust their bodies, optimize recovery, and improve performance. This is literally what drives me every day. I love teaching people how to trust their bodies and how to appreciate how amazing their own body is and how capable their own body is. And leveraging that to optimize recovery and improve performance. I love working with athletes. I love sport. I love being part of that all. I love seeing people use their bodies to do things like that. And so that's that's my whole mission. And I know that the best way to reach more athletes is to reach more professionals that work with athletes. So I am reaching out to you to ultimately reach more of them. Not for myself, but because I just love athletics. I love athletics. I love sport. I love what athletes and sport provides to everyone else who either participates or watches them. 
and the lessons learned. So I'm a big semantics person. So let's first talk about what the heck is the difference between a philosophy and a method or methodology or a principle and even a system. So philosophy is your basic beliefs or basic set of beliefs, concepts, and attitudes of an individual or an individual organization. A principle is a fundamental law or assumption. A method is a systematic procedure, technique, or mode of inquiry employed to a particular discipline, a way of doing something, a practice, a system that you follow. A methodology is a body of methods, a body of these systems followed that create rules, a hypothesis, a working hypothesis or postulate that you're working off of, employed by a discipline, which is a particular procedure or set of procedures. And a system is a set of things working together, a set of principles or a set of procedures according to which something is done. So, what are Movement Rev philosophies? These are my and my business, Movement Rev's, basic beliefs, my attitudes, and some concepts that are important to understand. So, these are my guiding belief system. This is my bias. This is the bias of how I see how the body is and how it moves and how it heals and how it performs. Number one, the body can heal itself. This is a shared belief from osteopathic medicine. The body, like I described at the beginning, it is a self-tuning, self-healing organism. The primary job of the musculoskeletal system is to protect the organs. You may have already heard me say this, but that is fundamentally always has been and always will be the primary job of the musculoskeletal system, protect the vital organs. This is why our really important organs are inside hard frame skeleton structures, right? Our brain and our heart and lungs. They are in very protected containers. Another belief um, is that movement dysfunction is a loss of biotensegrity or a pattern of protection. So movement dysfunctions are present when the body is protecting something more important, i.e. the organs, or protecting itself from getting hurt, protecting itself because it feels threatened and not safe, or is just a lack of dynamic alignment because we are not participating in our biotensegrity or fascial tensegrity of how the structure uses coupled and combined movements to improve movement efficiency and economy. I also believe very strongly that the practitioner, the sports healthcare provider, no matter what type of provider you are, you must be doing the work in your own body. It is impossible to take care of someone else and to really allow your body's wisdom to speak through your hands and speak through your brain if you are not doing the work in your own body. If you are too distracted by your own pain, by your own ego, by your own worries, by your own fears... If you are distracted because you are not dealing with your own shit, it's really impossible to be there for someone else in their healing journey. Okay? Another belief, uh, one of my favorite quotes um, from Jill Miller, the body thinks in feels, meaning feeling is better, more powerful, more sensitive, more true than thinking. The better we can be at improving our sensory information, the better output we will have. And our body is a sense-driven 
We are a sensory organ. We are driven by our sensory experience. Just like I described as the baby developing. What drove its development? The sensory experience. Understanding and interpreting the sensory information from the external environment as well as the internal environment. So tapping into being comfortable with learning how to optimize leaning into what you are feeling and improving your feeling is the way to go. Some other concepts um, that are part of the movement rev philosophy is that the neurovascular structures must be free to act and do their part. That is a play on a famous quote from A.T. Still, the founder of osteopathic medicine, Andrew Taylor Still. Um, He said that the... um, Nerves must be free to act and do their part. And that is true. And that um, the artery is supreme. That is what he means by that, right? The neurovascular structures, and you could even say the neurolymphatic vascular structures, must be free to glide and slide and move within the containers of the body. Because they are an extension of visceral organs. The nerves are an extension of the brain. The vessels, the vascular structures are an extension of the heart and the lungs. And the lymph is an extension of the vascular structures as well as the spleen and the liver. Okay. The, another concept that is really important is that the body is the smartest one in the room, not the practitioner. The body of the person you are working on, as well as your own body, which is why it's so important to get letting go of the ego, getting out of that thinking mind, and leaning into the feeling. Another belief is that lasting change happens only in a parasympathetic state. It is very difficult to optimize healing, improve performance on someone who is in a state of fight or flight or freeze. If their nervous system does not feel safe, then it doesn't matter if you do the best treatment in the world, if you do the best strength training in the world, their nervous system will always keep them in a protective mode. In protective modes, we are not granted our full mobility. We are not granted our full efficient movement patterns. And we are not actively doing the biochemical and hormonal things needed to facilitate rest and digestion and restoration and healing of tissues. Okay? The practitioner is merely a tinkerer or a guide. We are not fixing people. We are not healing people. We are not fixing people. We are not as important as the society makes us believe we are, which is part of the hard, the hard part of letting go of our ego is for years and years and years, we have been told that the medical professional, the healthcare professional is the smartest person, is the expert and is the person to do the healing and do the fixing and we are not. That is the body's job. We are simply there to assist the body in that that goal. The last belief is that the loss of the ability to compensate is the issue, not the compensation itself. The body is made to compensate. That is actually what makes us so amazing as human organisms. Like shit can happen to us and we deal with it and we continue to move on. This is why athletes, if you've ever worked with an athlete, it's why they come to see you. They're such great compensators because their capacity to withstand A lot of shit happening to them before they break down is greater than typically the normal person's, right? Whether you consider it a um, um, 
I call it a cup of compensation or like a threat bucket. Um, that's called uh, in some pain science uh, texts, uh, whatever you want to call it. That is usually, it's the straw that broke the camel's back, right? It was not, people did not have a problem until all of a sudden, right? My back didn't hurt until I sneezed. And then now I've herniated three discs. Was it the sneeze? No, it was all the other stuff. The sneeze was just the icing on the cake, right? <clears throat> so now let's talk about principles. So movement rev principles, which are fundamental laws and assumptions. So these are the guiding principles, the guiding laws and assumptions that I use while I'm practicing, where, while I'm seeing the body in this bias. I pull from osteopathic principles. This is the, the body wisdom. The body is the smartest one in the room and it has this um, self-tuning intelligence within it already. The body is self-healing and is constantly seeking a state of homeostasis, though understanding homeostasis is not a flat line in the middle. It is an ability to come in and out of threat, to come in and out of rest, right? Uh, another ortho osteopathic principle that uh, is a movement rep principle is that the organs are supreme. The organs are the most important thing to the body. The body hugs a lesion. So when we have an injury to the tissue, when we have um, something that is not functioning, an organ that's not functioning or, or a joint that's not functioning, the body goes into protective mode around that and tends to hug the lesion. Even in from a wound standpoint, right? All the healing, com healing um, cells and stuff come to the area and what does it start to do to the wound? It contracts it all in on itself, right? That is the body hugging the lesion. Lack of movement creates disease on a micro level and on a macro level. We know this. As we are in the movement industry, we know that when you're not moving, you're not very healthy, right? Sedentary is a problem. It's physics, right? But also, not just from a movement, from a musculoskeletal standpoint, even the organs and the cells the microstructures, we need micro movement in order to keep healthy as well. So movement on every level. When movement is lacking, that is when things start to fail. Some anatomy principles that I, I use, I'm, I'm a big fashion nerd, so every, I see everything from this fascial biotensegrity standpoint. I lean into embryology quite a bit. Um, and then physics, right? We're basically a whole series of pressure fluid dynamic systems. And then of course, biomechanics. Biomechanics is the anatomy principle, the science principle that I think most people are most fam more familiar with. And of course, physiology. The movement principles, I've already sort of talked about these a little bit, but the nervous system is queen. Um, one, is it, it's an organ. So we already know it rule like it's, the organ, the artery is supreme, right? The AT still quote, um, it's like the visceral organs are supreme. The nervous system is a visceral organ. However, then our autonomic nervous system, it's also queen because again, we're going back to the body is constantly seeking to survive. That is primary concern is survival. So understanding the body, being aware of if we're safe or if we're threatened. That, that is what is determining our output almost every single time, okay? And then looking at movement from an efficiency standpoint is knowing that we are sensory beings, that we need to improve our input if we, if we want to improve our output, our output being movement. So it's wild to me, even though we know that relationship, that we are more sensory beings than, than not, why this whole industry is built on changing people's output without really considering the inputs, right? So sort of flipping that around and understanding the output is an output. And so manipulating the environment, manipulating the movement experience to have the desired outcome on movement is how I approach things as opposed to cueing the output and trying to change the output. 
So another favorite quote by Elaine Ginn um, is, you, you learn techniques to understand principles. When you understand principles, you will create techniques. I love this. This is what it's all about. Everything I'm teaching, I'm always trying to teach people to understand these principles that I just went over. Because when you understand these, everything else sort of makes sense. And it doesn't matter what tool or technique you use. All right. So the movement rev method, which is a system, procedure, technique, or mode of inquiry employed to a particular discipline. How do we go about putting these principles, these philosophies into practice. We listen to the body, right? Because we are understanding the, uh, that fundamental body wisdom through an assessment of using the locator test. So the LTAP, the locator test assessment protocol, as well as um, measuring or assessing autonomic nervous system reactivity. We meet the body where it's at to create safety and facilitate rest, regeneration, and recovery. I teach movement within the fascial tensegrity system, utilizing all the sensory organs, breath, and bones, and dynamic alignment to facilitate that movement efficiency. And I approach movement dysfunction and pathology from a visceral and neural-based bias, meaning if someone's movement dysfunction is present, whether, whether it is poor hip extension or lacking upward rotation of the shoulder, instead of looking at that purely biomechanically about what muscles are firing or not firing or need strengthening or need stretching, what, you know, the sort of the old way of thinking, I'm looking at what organs relate to that area, what nerves relate to that area, what nerves could be entrapped that is limiting the hip going into extension or the hip going into flexion. So this is what I mean from looking at this from a visceral and neural based bias. How is the viscera and how are the nerves relating to this movement dysfunction, relating to this pathology or injury? Always going like one layer back. So the system that I use is a system of assessment which is a locator test assessment protocol, the LTAP, an ANS assessment, and then movement map assessment. So I still look at movement because movement is still my primary thing I care about, right? I want everyone to feel good in their body, moving their body, and performing well. And then from a more a performance standpoint, like I said, it's big on movement with tensegrity, creating a movement experience in a developmental sequence. So tapping into that already level of cellular intel intelligence that is within our body as a human organism. And then also leaning into teaching people about their body and teaching people how to take care of themselves. So self-care, cultivating awareness and self-reliance and compliance and facilitating people being smarter about paying attention to how they feel, trusting it, and then implementing a intervention. So the goals is to use all of that, use those systems, use those methods with the guiding principles and philosophies to decrease injury potential, improve performance, have people feel good in their body, expose the self-healing and self-tuning capabilities that are innate within our intelligent organism, in um, have people be an active participant in their health uh, by helping them improve their body ownership and body agency. And ultimately, my goal is for my athlete or my client to not need me anymore. I don't want anyone having to rely on me in order to feel well in the body and perform. I want them to be able to take care of the majority of stuff on their own and then just bring me in to be a tinker, to just make little adjustments here and there, much like you would maintenance on your car. You don't need to see the car maintenance person four times a week or even every week for that matter. Maybe every few thousand miles. So for an athlete, maybe that's every few weeks. For a non-athlete, just person that wants to feel good in their body, that might be once every couple of months or even less, especially when you start learning how to 
trust your body, how it feels, and how to take care of yourself. You don't always need to be working with a sports healthcare clinician. So hopefully that gives you sort of a good overview on where I'm coming from and how I've sort of pulled everything together. And obviously every episode that I talk about, you'll, you'll hopefully see these philosophies, see these principles, see these systems put into place in a tangible, practical way. Thank you for joining me. Can't wait till next time. Have a great day.